Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And on screen you can see one of the wonderful puzzles um, from the Modern Art Sudoku collection put together by our Discord server. So what happened was in November they had a competition to see if people could make Sudokus themed on modern art. Um, and several of the amazing constructors managed to basically build real art works into their Sudoku patterns. Um, now one of those authors was Mad Mahogany, um, whose puzzle this is. And it's based on this picture by Vincent van Gogh, um, which was painted in, you can see, 1888. And Mad Mahogany has not only built 1888 into the grid here, but he's made an approximate sort of rendition of the of the boat on the waves at the sea at Les Saint Marie de la Mer. Um, it's it's really beautiful, and I don't know if you can see the rules there. I'll read out the rules in a moment. But the rules are even thematic, and they relate to the waves that you can see in the painting. It's quite quite beautiful. Do have a look at this collection. I really do commend it to you. It's available completely free on our Patreon page at the moment. And there's something. I mean, there's nearly twenty of these astonishing creations. Um, and yeah, I mean, we knew Mad Mahogany was a favourite of the viewers, by the way, because um, we've just held the vote for our Kickstarter book for you, for the viewers to select the 20 puzzles that you would like to see in the book. And of the 20 puzzles, three of them, no less, are by Mad Mahogany. So a very popular author with very good reason. I don't actually know how difficult the puzzle is today. I forgot to ask that. So I'm not sure how hard this is. We shall see. You might have a clue from looking at the length of the video. Um, but anyway, check out the rest of the modern art. It's really, really cool. Now, a couple of things to mention before we get into today's puzzle. Um, the Killer Sudoku app, it's still not out to my knowledge. Um, as I said yesterday, it's with Steam, it's with Apple, it's with Android. They have the finished game. All they have to do is approve it and then we can release it. And as soon as I hear anything, I will I will tweet about it. Uh, our Twitter handle is at Cryptic Cracking. If you don't follow us there, you should. Um, what else? Oh, Mark. Mark has recorded his latest attempt to solve the Times Club monthly special, this vicious, vicious cryptic crossword that comes out each month on the Times website. Uh, Mark is, I, I, well, I'm confident in saying he is the only person on the planet who would have a prayer of solving that puzzle without using a dictionary, which is what he tries to do each month. I always like watching the videos because it's nice to watch him struggle. So if you enjoy a bit of schadenfreude, check that out. Um, other than that, on Patreon, of course, we have this wonderful Sudoku puzzle hunt that's been getting so much attention by Stefan Bura and Akash Jain. It's some Christmas present and it's called Tracking the Cryptid. And I need to read you out some more names of people who've managed to solve it. And if you did manage to solve it, congratulations, because that is no mean solving feat. So well done. Jason Funk, Graham and Joe Criddle, Tommy Starling, Gilad Goldberg and Britt Arnon. Fantastic work. Um, and if you haven't checked it out, do have a look. Right, let's get on to Mad Mahogany's Vincent van Gogh tribute now. And I will read you the rules, which are surprisingly short. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits along the blue lines increase and decrease alternatively. So um, that's why I think of, um, Mad Mahogany suggested we could call this Wave Sudoku, um, because basically as you move along each of these lines, it it goes a bit like a wave. So if this was a low digit, this would have to be a high digit. Let's actually put in some numbers. Let's say that was a three and it was a low digit. Then this would have to be higher than three, but it could be any number higher than three. Let's make it six. Now this one just has to be lower than six again. It could be loads lower. That could be loads higher. So you can see we just have to make sure that we alternate up and down along the line. That could be seven. That could go back to two. That could be five. And I've probably broken the rules of yeah look I've broken the rules of Sudoku there but apart from that that might be I think a valid arrangement of this wave so that's how the rule set works very unusual let's reset the grid um, and yeah it's not one I remember seeing before but I guess what we're going to have to do is to try and work out the so-called parity of each of the wavy lines. Um, do have a go the way to play just click the link under the video as usual now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, do we start with, I was about to say I was going to start with Sudoku, but I'm not because there is an eight on this line. And that means we can determine the peaks and the troughs. 
in this line because if this square is a low digit then this would have to be higher than 8 and this would have to be higher than 8 because we need to alternate up and down. Now we can make one of these yellow squares higher than 8 but the other one will then have a problem. Um, we can't repeat 9 in the row so this square is a is a high digit and if it's a high when I say a high digit it's a peak um, which means the two squares these two squares are definitely lower than 8 so we know that along that line all of those squares are low I will make low mm, green and I will make the other squares the peak squares peak purple I will make them P for purple uh, P for peak um, so peak equals purple in my strange brain and that is interesting but right okay so now we can do a little eight now can't go in that square because then those two squares would both have to be higher than eight and they both have to be nine which doesn't work so that affects the Sudoku a little bit eight's got to be down here in fact actually actually as I stare at the grid now I'm realizing that Sudoku is not going to get me very far I've got three eights which I think I've now used and two ones I suppose one can never be a purple square can it no because then those two would have to be zero and although my software allows me to do that Sudoku doesn't so one has to be in one of those three cells in box three yeah and that's as, that's as far as we can get with Sudoku so we're gonna have to think much harder I think about the blue lines ah one one is on this blue line so again we can we know one must be green because it must be a trough digit we must be moving upwards whenever we move away from a one so so looking at it so that's a high therefore that's low and that's low so all these three are purple so this wave is upside down its troughs are on its top and its peaks are on its bottom and these two cells look both have to be lower than five and they can't be one so they are two three or four uh, no I'm not sure that actually takes us very far forward so what am I missing here do we have to do we have to look at the tsunami wave at the bottom the enormous wave Well, that wave is interesting. Ah, uh, yeah, we probably do have to look at this one. Sorry, I'm just appreciating that, that because of how this wave is laid out, whatever this cell is, whether it's a peak or a trough, that obviously propagates along the whole wave. So this, these cells are either all purple or they're all green. Right, okay, I see. So we're going to be able to learn a bit about this square because if these are all well let's look at it if these are all green so these are all trough digits which one of these are we going to make a nine the answer is none of them because if we put a nine in any of these squares as we go upwards we will have to put a 10 into one of the peaks which won't work so if these are green this square has to be nine and presumably it works the other way around if these are on the other hand these are all peaks and the wave is upside down again and we try and put one in oopsie we try and put one into any of these cells we'd have to put zero above it which won't work um, so what so this square is not eight this is what we've learned from this uh, long exercise this square is a one or a nine depending on whether this the bottom of this wave is peaking or troughing. Um, so, do we know anything else about? So this, there's certainly some sort of constraint. I can. The other thing I'm noticing is that these cells are all. They all have two connections. So, uh, 
Ah, so again, let's actually look at this. Imagine all of these are troughs. If all of these are troughs, we have a problem with 9 in that 9 can't go in any of those squares because then I'd have to put 10 below it. But you also have a problem with 8 because all of these squares are connected to two cells. So if I try and put 8 into that square, I can get away with 9 in one of the cells below it, but the other one will have to be greater than 9, and that's impossible. So actually, yeah, okay, so we, should, we can shunt 8. So if these are green, 8 and 9 have to be in the edges. But, of course, it's not necessarily the case. These are green. These could, this wave could be the right way up. These are purple. And now the problem is the 1 and the 2. Because if we make that 2, for example, it's a peak. It needs two troughs below it, two digits lower than 2, 1 and 0. A 0 is not a valid digit. So, so if these are purple, 1 and 2 go into the sides. But we don't know yet what the parity of this line is. So, hmm. So this, can we rule anything out with Sudoku now? It'd be very handy. I just don't know. There's just not enough digits to do anything with Sudoku. So can you, I don't see what else I can do with row eight. I really don't. Can I do more with row nine? So if row nine is, let's make it green just for the sake of argument. If it's green, these are all trough digits. The issue we have is with nine. What about eight? Where does eight go? Ah, ah that's a sensible question. Eight is all, ah, eight is also problematic. 8 is also problematic because 8 can never go in any cell that has two peaks above it. So 8 is ruled out of all of these yellowy squares now. 8 can't go there because remember this is a 9 here. So it, we couldn't put a 9 in this square. So eight, 8 is ruled out of all those squares. So if these are green, 8 goes in the corner. Nobody puts 8 in the corner except me. Um... And then that would be 9, of course. And presumably it works the other way around. Let's double check. So if, on the other hand, these are all purple... Oh, the light's just flickered. I hope my computer doesn't turn off. That would be bad. Um, then if... I'm losing my train of thought now. <laughs> if these are purple... The issue is where does the 1 go? So the 1 has to go here. Because I can't make any of these 0. Now where does the 2 go? So the 2 can't go here because the 1 can't go there because the 1 is already here. So the 2 would go there and that is symmetrical. So although we don't know what the colour is, Oh, and that would be a 1, presumably. Whoopsie, didn't mean to do that. Let's put a 1 here. So if this is a 2, yeah, if these are high digits, this is the 2, this is the 1. We've almost got a quadruple now along here. Oh, I see. No, hang on. I've understood. I've understood. Now the question you ask is where does the next... So it's like an iterative. Where does the next digit go? So if we are in... Whether we're looking at 8s or 9s or 1s and 2s... Yeah, look. Oh, it's lovely. It's just lovely. Where does... Let's let's look at this. Uh, let's me restore. Let's restore this back to being purple, I think. Um... If this is purple, we know that the issue is with low digits because these these are going to have to be even lower. So if we're in purple digits, this square would have to be a 1. Let's actually do it. This would be 1, this would be 2, this would be 1. Now the question is where does 3 go? Where are we going to put 3 along here? Now 3 can't go there. 
because then this would have to be one or two and it can be neither. Three can't go anywhere else along this line, apart from here, um, because if, it, if three is in any of those positions, there are two lower digits than three that are necessary in these two squares, for example, or these two squares, and there, one is not available. So three has to go there, where it only needs one digit lower than it because of the way that the wave works. So this would be three, this would be two. And maybe we can even go further than this. Let's, let's go back though, because I don't know what the ordering is. So if we are, if we've got purple here, we know this is, oopsie, um, we know this is three and this is two. If we've got green here, then the issue then is with high digits. We'd have nine, eight, nine, and the issue is with seven, which can't go here. So this has to be, se ah, this has to be seven and this has to be eight. And look, it can't be eight because there's an eight in column eight already. This does not work. So this is gonna determine the parity of our wave. So let me do that slowly. If this is green and the wave is the right way up, so this wave is gonna be the wrong way up again. If this is green and these are purple, the issue we have is with, how do we put high digits on, on in the troughs? Because we're gonna to have to put even higher digits in the peaks. So we, we know for sure that nine has to shift over there. We know for sure the eight only has one place to go, which is there. And now we ask where seven goes. Seven can't go there because that can't be eight or nine. Seven can't go in any of those positions or this one because there are two peaks above each of these yellow squares. And there's only one digit that's free because nine is unavailable. So the seven has to go here the eight would have to go above it and that breaks the puzzle because Vincent van Gogh knew back in 1888 that this would be a problem. So we, we can't do this. This does not work and we have an upside down wave where these are all purple. The peaks are at the bottom, the troughs are at the top and we can start to fill in a load of digits. So we're looking all of these come in. These two squares are now one, well, eight, nine pair. One, where does one go in box eight? By Sudoku. And well, and the fact this can't be a one because it's got to be higher than that digit. One goes there. That determines the parity of this line now. This line, we know the troughs must be in all of those positions. So this wave is the right way up and all of those go in. One goes here by Sudoku. That determines the parity of this wave. So these two are both, oh, this wave is the wrong way up again. So that wave goes like that. Can we go on with ones? One's got to be in one of those squares. Yes, this, yes, we can. That places a one there as well. One must, well, yes, we can. One can't go in a purple square ever because then those two squares would have to be zeros. So one goes there, that determines the parity of this wave and it determines where that one goes. And I think we may have done all the ones in the grid. Now we know, let me not mess, mess this up. That's green, that's green, that's green, I think. So those ones are green, the purples are that one, that one, and that one. And all of a sudden we're getting a very We've done all our parities. We've done all the parities now. So now all we have to do, well, no, not all we have to do, but now all we have to do is work out. So that's a high digit. So this is lower than a four and it can't be a one. That's a two or a three. That gives a two, three, four triple in this box look. Um, quite see how to make that useful. One in a trough is totally useless. Um, oh, two, three here. That's just looking at that square. That's a four. So this column perhaps is where we should look. We need six, seven, and nine into those positions. That can't be six by Sudoku. That is in a peak, so it's a high digit. So that's not very restrictive. And 
Still. Oh, I see. I see. Look. We still we can still make use of the tsunami. Ah, look. Where does four go along the tsunami? We've got to put a four in one of the peak squares because it's got to go in the bottom row. We have to put a four somewhere. Well, if I put a four here, for example, these two squares would have to both be lower than four. Well, they can only one of them could be a three, but the other one would not have a valid value. So immediately we can rule four out of all of those squares. Now you can't put four here because then this square would have to be a one, two or three and it can't be any of them. So four goes there. This has to be three, therefore, because it's got to be lower than four and can't be one or two. Five by Sudoku goes here. This has to be lower than five and can't be one, two or three. So it's four. Good grief. This is this is just a brilliant puzzle. It's a brilliant puzzle. So now. Now, now where. Oh, this is lovely. Where does six go in the bottom row? Well, let's ask whether it could go here. What would we put in that square? It would need to be one, two, three, four or five. It can't be any of them. So six is not here. Six can never go in these two squares because these two squares have two cells above them, a domino that both need to be lower than six when one, two, three and four are not available. Not possible. So six has got to go here, which means this square has to be five, which Oh, by Sudoku, these eights lock the eight in the bottom row. These two squares have got to be seven and nine. By Sudoku, these two squares have got to be six or seven by Sudoku. Well, that can't be seven then. Because if this is seven, both of these cells need to be lower than seven. And only one of them can be. So that's nine. That's seven. That fixes the six and the seven. These two squares are two and three now. It's probably resolvable somehow, but I can't see how. This, oh, where does four go in uh, this box? Four can't be here because this, this cell needs to be higher than the four there. So four must go here. So this square has become an eight or a nine and it can't be an eight. So this is a nine, this is an eight. Uh, we can probably go further than this. I'm just not quite seeing how at the moment. Four must be in one of those cells. Oh, look, this eight here is giving us a nine here. These squares have got to be... Oh, that's interesting. These squares have got to be six, seven and eight, but they are the same parity as a one. So eight has to be a trough, which means it has to have a nine above it in one of the peaks. Now that rules out eight from those two squares because both of these squares have two peaks above them and you can't, you can only put nine in once. So this is eight, those are not eight. This is a nine. Oh, and again, it's beautiful. The logic just, it propagates along these waves. You can't put seven here now because if this is seven, both of those squares need to be higher than seven. And only one of them can be because the nine isn't available. So that's got to be six. That's got to be seven. That's got to be eight. That's got to be higher than six, you say. That's a seven, therefore. Seven, four. Oh, four and seven here. Four and seven there. That is a four, seven pair. Which might be handy or not. It's very hard for that to be. If that's a seven that would have to be a nine because it needs to be higher than seven. Maybe it can be a nine at the moment. Hmm, not sure. Um, where else shall we look? We can, we've done all the ones. Ah, this column. Yeah, yeah, look, we've got a naked single. That square is a naked single sitting there brazenly in the sun. Um, because in the column, you can see we've got one, six, seven, eight, and nine. And in the box, we've got two, three, and four. 
So this square is a five, which means one of those two squares is a five. That's probably resolved somehow in a way I can't quite spot. Um, these three squares therefore are six, seven, and nine to complete this box's quota of things. These squares are two, three, and four. That that That's not going to be helpful because you can see this is always higher than whatever I put in that square. So. Oh, nine. Nine in those two squares. Well, where does nine go in those three positions here? Nine can never go in a green because it's going to have to have a 10 next to it if nine's in a trough. So nine must go in there. Nine, therefore, is not here. That's a seven. Ah, oh, that seven fixes this. Seven and four. Seven's got to be in one of these two squares. It can't be in the trough there, because if it is, that will have to be an eight or a nine. So this is not seven. The seven goes here, which fixes the eight. Fixes a seven by Sudoku. That fixes another seven by Sudoku. This is a 2-4 pair, I think. Again, just Sudoku playing its role. That can't be 4, so this is 4. That fixes the 4 and the 2. I don't believe it. Um, okay. So in this row, look, we need 2, 3, and 5. Well, ah, look, that's a 4 in a trough. So that has to be higher than four and it can only it can't be two or three therefore that has to be five that fixes the five in box five fittingly enough um, doesn't fix the five in box over there box four these two squares are a two three pair which I don't know if I can resolve yet it's probably a way of doing it but I can't see what it is um, and other than that we need five six and nine into these squares Again, I'm sure there's a way of resolving this, but sometimes when I'm solving, it's hard to spot the most efficient way. Um, three and five into those squares. Ah, oh, that, that fixes that five immediately, look. Six, nine pair here. Still need three, six and nine into those squares. That one can't be nine. Now, I've got to make sure I keep track of parity here. This one is not helpful because you can see it's surrounded by six and seven. All we can say about this one is it needs to be lower than seven, which is not a huge amount of information. So looking at the column though, two and three are available and that's it. So actually this, that is a bit helpful. That does create a two, three pair in this row. So let's just take a look at row four then. We still need four, five, six, and nine. So this square has to be a six or a nine, which pairs up with that one. Wow. So this is a four, five pair, which is resolved. That fixes all of those. Okay, well that felt good, therefore that must be two. These are a three, six pair, not resolvable. This is, I think that's fairly, yeah, look, these ones, pin, these waves here, are, all we know about them is they're higher than one. That's not a great deal of information, is it? Um, this has got to be two or six. Or maybe this one then. Okay, that one there has got to be higher than four. So what are the options there? It can't be... Six or nine. It can't be six. Lovely. That one's got to be nine. Therefore, that's a six. That's a six. That's a nine. That's a six. That's a nine. That three six pair here fixes. This one's the two. That fixes the two and the three. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, that gives us a two here. Three here. Two here. Three, two. Three, six. 389 here must be resolved. Yeah, that's got to be 8. 
that's a 9, that's a 3, that's a 3, that's a 6, and that is how to solve one of the most beautiful puzzles you will ever see, I hope. Click, yes, that is how to solve it. What a lovely idea, and what an execution. I love the way that the picture, let's go back and look at the picture. The picture sort of represented in, in a very modern arty way with the lines. I love the fact that the, the rules make reference to the painting. I love the fact there's a date in there. And I love the fact it made for a beautiful Sudoku solve. That is absolute talent from Mad Mahogany. Fantastic. I hope you enjoyed it just a, a smidge as much as I did. Uh, let me know in the comments. I do read them. Thanks for watching and we'll be back later with another edition. Cracking the cryptic.